Architecture reflects the values of a people as well as of an historical era. The old McHenry County Courthouse is one of the last remaining examples of an elegant, well-designed, Italianate courthouse. Hello, I'm Jim May, storyteller and writer, and Woodstock's my second hometown. The old courthouse, sitting in stately splendor on the west side of the square, reigns over Woodstock's park, gazebo, and opera house. It was designed in 1857 by Chicago architect John Mills Van Odsel. Van Odsel designed the Palmer House, Cook County's second courthouse, the governor's mansion, and many significant pre-Civil War buildings in the Midwest. The old courthouse has stood witness to Woodstock's growth from the very beginning, since the days of dirt roads and wooden buildings and the arrival of the railroad. For a century and a half, it has been present for celebrations, solemn remembrances, public gatherings, and has watched downtown Woodstock change into a vibrant commercial center and visitor's destination. The square offers a people-friendly central gathering place for strolling and neighboring, with a variety of shops and restaurants opening onto brick streets and a thriving farmer's market. Among the attractions for visitors and residents alike are a jewel of an opera house, a restored movie theater cineplex, an art gallery, an independent bookstore, a coffee house and stage, a chocolate shop, bakery, and outdoor dining. The history of the old McHenry County Courthouse is interwoven with the history of Woodstock itself. Woodstock was selected as the county seat because of its geographical location in the center of McHenry County. In fact, it was first named Centerville. The central two-acre lot, which today is the beloved Woodstock Square, was home to the first McHenry County Courthouse. In 1855, county officials commissioned the design of a new courthouse on its present day location. The courthouse was completed in 1857 at a cost of $47,000. The courthouse rises from a high brick basement through two stories to a cupola located in the center of four low-pitched gabled roofs. The stone foundations carry the interior and exterior walls. Two cast iron columns rise through the first and second floors to support rough-hewn wood timbers in the attic, which in turn support the cupola above. Massive, rough-hewn timbers are joined by mortise and tenon as part of the building's original structural support. In the ceiling of the courtroom, two circular openings utilize decorative vents that can be opened or closed to provide ventilation. This basement housed the original county jail, a dozen cells surrounded by a large corridor. The cells were constructed of brickwork lined by three inch thick planks. Similar planks were overhead covering six inches of solid masonry. The only light that could penetrate into the cells came from a small opening in the heavy oak plank doors. Perhaps the most notorious prisoner housed here at the Woodstock Jail was James Dacey of Chicago. He became the first person and the only one that we know of legally hanged in Woodstock after being convicted of killing Chicago Alderman Michael Gaynor in a saloon fight in 1886. Simon Brink who would later oversee the design and construction of the opera house, constructed the scaffold for the hanging. It became apparent that the new jail was needed when newspapers reported that children from a neighboring home saw light shining through the brick wall of the jail and that prisoners were about to escape. In order to address the problem, a structure was built on the adjoining Neil Donnelly property in 1887, housing both the sheriff's residence and a modern, more secure jail. It was here in the sheriff's house and jail that many famous and infamous prisoners were held. Perhaps the most famous of them all was the esteemed Eugene V. Debs, historic labor leader and three-time candidate for president on the Socialist Party ticket. Debs was incarcerated in Woodstock on a contempt of court charge related to his American Railway Union leadership in the 1894 Pullman strike. A nonviolent and well-read gentleman, he became the most popular prisoner in the history of the town. He tutored the other prisoners, entertained guests from town and dignitaries from around the United States. Debs dined regularly with the sheriff 
and he and Sheriff Eckert became lifelong friends. Eugene Debs still has his photo exhibited here in the old courthouse. My favorite story about him tells of a reporter that came to, to do an interview. But when the reporter asked the desk sergeant if he could talk to the prisoner, the sergeant said no, that would be impossible because Mr. Debs was in Harvard hunting with the sheriff. While in the Woodstock jail, Debs came to believe in the cause of socialism as the best solution to address the downtrodden conditions of working people in America. Two other famous prisoners were Dapper Dan McCarthy and Jaime Weiss, both members of Chicago's Dino Abanian gang. Convicted of hijacking a truckload of whiskey, they were sent to the McHenry County Jail where Sheriff Edinger put them to work, helping to build a brick garage behind the jail. I had uh, bootleggers for babysitters, literally, uh, when he, uh, and the bootleggers were mostly out from Chicago. After they were there for a month or two, if they behaved themselves, they became trustees and they'd be, they'd mow the lawn, clean the courthouse, sheriffs, babysit the sheriff's kids. And there was one in particular, a guy named uh, Nick DeGrazia. Uh, from a good Italian family in, in Chicago. And his wife would come out on weekends to make spaghetti for him in our kitchen. And she had a terrific spaghetti sauce. And my mother acquired that recipe, so it kind of became our family recipe. You could not succeed yourself at that time until after the time, it was in the late 70s, I think it was when the law was changed. Doc Edinger was sheriff three times, uh, so was my father-in-law. And they, so they lived four years in Woodstock, and then they'd move to Marengo. Then my father-in-law was county treasurer for four years, and then they'd, he'd run for sheriff, then he'd be re-elected as sheriff. The sheriff's wife was required to prepare meals for the prisoners, which became quite a big chore during Prohibition when the jail swelled with inmates. Well, my father was uh, sheriff three times, and we lived, of course, in the sheriff's residence. My mother was also an employee of the county and that she cooked for the prisoners. And the prison population uh, varied between half a dozen and 70 at one time. One night we were at dinner and uh, there was a knock on the back door and we went to, to the back door and there was a guy named Elmer Sheets. He was a forger. And he was wanted in McHenry County and he was wanted in California and a couple other places. And he decided he'd turn himself in in McHenry County because my mother's cooking was so good. During Prohibition, the basement was frequently used to store and to dump barrels of beer down the sewer drain. You know, they'd confiscate all this liquor and it was put in the basement of the jail. And then they figured that, geez, they ought to get rid of that sometimes. So they were dumping it down the sewer and back of the jail. And the people on the square thought the sheriff was running a still. Over the years, as the county grew, multiple additions and interior alterations were made to the courthouse. By the 1960s, the county outgrew the building. And after lengthy study, the offices, courts, and jail moved to a new facility at the north end of Woodstock. The old courthouse and buildings were sold to Bev and Cliff Ganshaw in 1973. At that time, shopping centers and strip malls were vying for Woodstock's downtown business. And they were winning because they had more parking space for shoppers. But a meeting between Woodstock resident Cliff Ganshaw and internationally renowned journalist and Woodstock resident John Strom was to present an opportunity for the courthouse and for the city of Woodstock. So these 10 or 12 guys, uh, they happened to meet in, in my partner's uh, house uh, one evening and, and they literally agreed that uh, what they would do is form a, an investment group, buy it for the purpose of tearing it down and making a parking lot out of it. And one of the individuals, a uh, very, very solid citizen, said, well, if we do that, why don't we buy the opera house in the city and tear it down? We'd have two parking lots. And uh, after they all left, uh, my partner and I were sitting there uh, having a, a cup of coffee and he said, uh, well, Cliff, what do you think? And I said, I, 
I think it sounds like a very bad idea. And he said, so do I. And uh, he had more funds than I did. I said, why don't you buy it? And he said, well, you're 25 years younger than I am. Why don't you buy it? And I, I mean, literally, it was that's what traded. I went home, Bev and I talked about it. And, uh, and we didn't have much time because they were, were taking bids on it. And I remember very distinctly walking up the steps of the old courthouse and my bid was $500 more than what this group was going to bid. And I got to thinking, should I have done a thousand more? <laughs> but I, it was too late. I had my check and, and it had to be a cashier's. So uh, that's the way we bought the building. Cliff and I had talked about it. And uh, as Cliff mentioned, we were young and uh, very young and idealistic and not overburdened with a lot of negative information. And uh, so when he proposed this idea to me, I said, oh, it sounds kind of risky to me, but I think we probably have to do it. And so it was in May of 72, I went into Cliff's office and he handed me a postcard with a picture of the courthouse. And on the back of it, it said, Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> In adapting the building to new uses, the primary interior spaces were maintained, including the central hallway and this graceful curved stairway with metal stamped ceiling. Also preserved were the early 20th century vaults and hand-painted doors, the courtroom space and the high ceilings. Hidden behind painted canvas on the courtroom ceiling is old decorative stenciling. Storage areas provide evidence of original finishes including stenciling and full-grained wood trim. Today, the buildings house the courthouse art gallery, Le Petit Crepere restaurant, and a number of artist studios. Because of its architectural and historical significance, the old courthouse was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1973. In December of 2011, the city of Woodstock acquired the old courthouse property. The city of Woodstock actually took ownership of this uh, beautiful historic building on our downtown historic square. And we did so in order to be able to uh, preserve its uh, historic value and to make sure that it was in a good, solid, stable condition uh, for the future. Uh, we here in the city of Woodstock recognize its importance to our historic, our cultural values, and so we wanted to make sure that it uh, was maintained in perpetuity. Nothing worthwhile is ever easily achieved, and acquiring the old McHenry County Courthouse came with some costs, of which the city and the city council were well aware. There are certain aspects of a building that you can't see um, continuing to, to, to deteriorate over time that have to be addressed because they can, they'll just continue to uh, weaken the structural stability of the building, uh, they'll cause other problems. We put supports up in the courtroom and that's water coming in from the roof. That's the problem. That's what's causing that. So uh, you want a building to be weather tight. Now, there are really four areas that we're trying to focus on right now. Um, the first is that the uh, upper dome, that beautiful uh, dome that is at the top, uh, needs to be secure. And I don't want anybody to mistake this. It's not uh, in need of, of immediate care because it's just going to all of a sudden fall down. But uh, we need to make sure that it is stable and secure. The second primary priority is the roof itself. We, we need to re-roof the building. The third area has been uh, dealing with the brickwork and the spalding and the eaves. We need to kind of make sure that those are all secure. We, we did uh, some work this uh, past year in making sure that we replace those uh, deteriorating bricks. We've got a lot of that taken care of. Uh, fourth area of primary concern is the front stairway and uh, that's made out of limestone and uh, as we're all familiar limestone is a softer type of stone. Uh, it shows a lot of wear. It's subject of course to freezing and thawing and cracking. We need to truly replace that entire stairway with, with uh, good solid stonework. In order to identify immediate issues and overall restoration needs, the city hired Gary Anderson from the Rockford, Illinois based Gary W. Anderson Architects a firm well known for their expertise in restoration and renovation to prepare a baseline conditions report. When we received the call uh, to come there and take a look at it, um, uh, it was like, wow, 
This is great. <laughs> the courthouse uh, certainly is one of those wonderful places in part of Americana, uh, the courthouse square. You know, everything is pretty much intact there for that courthouse square uh, with all the retail and uh, the courthouse itself with a park in the, in the, in the square. It's like, uh, what more can you ask for in terms of uh, a piece of America? And I think it's really critical and important that uh, the courthouse is preserved and protected for future generations. If we were to wipe off um, that from the face of the earth, um, is it gonna be just like any other strip mall or just open space for parking? It doesn't really lend itself to the character that th this building projects. And therefore, uh, you know, it's also part of that whole street wall and ambiance of what makes up a town square, which are very rare these days. And it sets really Woodstock apart from everybody else. So at this point in the story, it's perhaps wise to ask, what does the future hold for the old McKendrick County Courthouse? If it were restored to like 1905, like they would like to have it done, I think it's very important because I think the past is just as important as the future. What's the square going to be without the courthouse? You know, and uh, uh, it would be, I think, a terrible mistake to let it just go to rack and ruin. Are we going to go down the road of public-private partnership? Is there a private partner out there? Or do we need to look at the city owning the building for a period of time? Might be an extended period of time before we ask the question again. It's just a unique photo in time. And so it's fascinating. And I would invite uh, people to come in to visit the old courthouse and to fall in love with it as so many have done in the past. We have people visiting this building from all over the country and they thank us, I'm gonna get emotional, for saving the building. Oh. You know, it's more of a destination location um, than it is uh, for even just the um, those that live in Woodstock to kind of go there. I think it can be that much more of an attraction um, regionally and uh, because of the square and all the shops and everything and the whole experience there. So why not enhance it even more so with a pretty spectacular courthouse? And, um, and, I, and I do believe that, um, you know, the city administration really gets that and recognizes the importance of it and the council there that um, this is a pretty cool asset that they have um, and not to say that it's easy to figure it out um, but it's one of those things that it's worth taking the time to do so. This grand old building it's baked earthen bricks paying tribute to the soil from which the early settlers made their living still stands on the Woodstock Square today an homage to democracy beauty and the American way of life. Here, the legal business of the people of the county was conducted on their own turf, in the middle of their market and gathering place, at the geographical hub of their social and commercial life. The courthouse stood guardian for over a century and a half, built by the people who honored this country's ideals as they climbed the 17 steps of the main entrance to conduct their daily business. It was here that legal verdicts were doled out the law was administered and the guilty jailed. All of these decisions, of course, subject to the usual human frailties. This grand, magnificent old courthouse remains a window into the past as well as a challenge to the future.